Hello, I'm Molly from CPCAB. We wanted to acknowledge and thank you, first of all, for all the hard work that you've done in adapting to the COVID-19 situation this academic year. And we recognise, of course, at this time of the year that plans are underway for new courses starting in September 2020 in the next academic year. So this is a short presentation just to give you some guidance on things that you need to uh, watch out for and be mindful of when you're making plans for your new courses. We'd like to tell you what Ofqual have um, advised and Ofqual have pointed to a return to the classroom in September 2020. They've said that you should plan on the basis that from September 2020, all learners will return to a full high quality education programme. This guidance will be kept under review and will be updated as necessary. So we need to hold that in mind with the more general government guidance that we've also received. And this comes in July 2020, saying that given the varied nature of colleges, it's not possible for the government to be prescriptive and provide a blueprint that could apply to every college. A tailored approach within these guiding principles will be required to ensure an approach that is practicable, safe, and which meets as far as is possible the needs of the learners, staff, and the wider community. So at CPCAB, we recognise that centres will vary enormously in their capacity for a return to training in the new academic year. Many centres will have already received approval for remote delivery, and we're pleased to say that this is extended into 2020-21. If you haven't received approval for remote delivery, perhaps because you decided to pause your courses, and you intend to continue any remote delivery, you will need to apply for our approval for that. And you can do that by visiting our website and downloading and submitting the application form. It's a really simple process. So in thinking about plans for the new courses, we're really keeping your safety and well-being um, at the heart of our, of our guidance. So we're aware of sort of three key areas that we need to uh, take into account when we're um, guiding you and helping you in your plans. The first is an acknowledgement that it's, it is possible that there may be a lockdown situation in force um, in September. We can't rule that out completely. So we need to be mindful of that. Um, the second, of course, is that social distancing will be in place. Those guidance and rules will apply to all our centres, we would imagine. And centres will need to consider what the arrangements for numbers of students in classrooms, uh, use of additional rooms, for example, breakaway rooms for counselling skills practice or other areas where students might meet. So those are important considerations. And of course, there will be some candidates um, and tutors possibly who are unable to return to the classroom uh, for personal reasons, perhaps because they're shielding or isolating. So all those factors um, have informed our thoughts um, around the guidance that we're going to provide to you now. So there are a number of options available for you. Um, the first is that with your CPCAB approval, you could start your new courses completely remotely, um, either carrying on with remote delivery that you'd already set up in this academic year or picking up new courses um, remotely from September. So that's one option that's available to you. Of course, don't forget you will need your approval. Another option would be to adapt your courses and, and retain some elements of remote delivery and blend those with some uh, traditional face-to-face, in-person classroom um, training. So those options um, would include your uh, approval for remote delivery and um, you could then blend those. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The third option um, is, and I'm sure many of you will be hoping for this, would be to return completely to a classroom face-to-face in-person training programme. And I'm sure we all hope that time will be coming soon. So there are certain things to remember when you're thinking about your plans for new courses. 
The first is that if you have any significant changes to your scheme of work, and that's beyond um, a remote delivery or face-to-face -face delivery, please do submit those in the usual way to CPCAB um, for our approval. The second point to remember is that um, the guidance that we're producing now may change and so please keep an eye out for your inbox and our website for any updates on the guidance that we're providing. And lastly, it's really important to remember that you still need to account for your guided learning hours in whatever delivery method you choose. Guided learning hours are particularly important because they're set out in the qualification specification. They're stated on the regulated qualifications framework and they're linked to the credit value of your qualification. So your students would expect to receive the minimum guided learning hours for their chosen course. Guided learning hours really are um, an indication of the time that a learner spends being taught or instructed or participating in educational training under the uh, supervision of a tutor. So that's set work by the tutor and it might include assessment time, for example, tutor observations or other observations where you're assessing students' uh, learning and capacity um, at the time. So guided learning hours actually can be real time synchronous um, and that might be remotely or face to face and they can also be asynchronous as well. So that could be learning that's not in real time. There are a wealth of resources available on the Internet to help you develop good practice for remote delivery. And there's a couple that we'd like to um, point you to. One is a free short course by the Open University and the other is a webinar that BACP have on their website, website called Train the Trainer and that one provides some really useful tips about um, remote teaching and learning and also some examples from some recorded sessions with students so it's well worth a watch. Now, I referred earlier to the option that we know a number of centres are considering for a blended learning approach for new courses in this academic year. Blended learning really is a model of teaching and learning which combines remote and face-to-face -face delivery in a way that draws on the strengths of the offline and online components. Now you'll need to really consider your risk assessments if you're thinking about a blended learning delivery style to make sure that your students needs are met and that they're kept safe. So we would ask you to think about what worked well for you this year, what challenges you had and what would best suit the needs of your candidates and your centre as you move forward into the next academic year. We're really committed to supporting you to continue with your training programmes and we'll be providing some short um, scenarios of different models of blended learning that we hope might be useful for you. So for now, um, again, our thanks go out to you all for all the hard work that you've done recently in adapting to the COVID-19 crisis. And thank you for watching this and we look forward to working with you again next year.